What is going on, everyone? I have a special treat for you today. It was first discussed in 1828 in a book written by Mr. Gullum Kassim. E4, E5, knight F3, knight C6, D4. Everything trades off. E takes D4, knight takes D4, knight takes D4, queen takes D4. Very common move, D6, and then bishop D3 makes the Gullum Kassim. There's a free ebook. I will put the link in the description. The name is Analysis of the Muzio Gambit and Match of Two Games at Chess played between Madras and Hyderabad with remarks. On page 4950 in the top of 51, you will find the game that we're talking about today. With that being said, we're going to go through the line in the book, and then we're going to rewind and go back through a second time and see if we can find any improvements with modern technology. Remind you, this is almost 200 years old. Not much is known about Mr. Gullam Kassim. He was an Indian, though. And the first couple moves follow the most popular moves. So knight to f6 is the most popular move. Castle's kingside is the most popular move. Bishop e7 is the most popular move. And this is where things kind of veer off. The move h3 with the intentions of preventing knight or bishop moves to g4. Black will castle. And white pushes f4 with the intention of being able to move the queen to f2. Because black is going to be looking for a queen exchange on b6. C6 is pushed, so the queen can access the B6 square and force an exchange. And the queen moves back to F2. And the knight now goes to E8. Instead, white would have preferred if the queen went to B6, because then the bishop can come to E3, forcing a move of the queen. And white would love for the queen to come in and take the B pawn, because that brings the queen out of play from everything that's going on, the king side. And it's actually good for white, according to the analysis. But the move that is played is knight to e8, looking to be able to push the f-pawn. So in, under normal circumstances, you don't want to push the g-pawn. But here, it is acceptable because if black pushes the d-pawn, you can capture it with your e-pawn, knowing you still have a pawn defending the f5 square. And that's exactly what happens. Black pushes d5. White captures, black captures. And now, white pushes f5. The purpose of this move is to prevent black from playing f5 himself. So now black switches to the other side and goes b6, looking to Fianchetto, the light-squared bishop. White plays bishop to e3, making a battery aiming at that freshly pushed b-pawn. And black does Fianchetto, the bishop, on b7. The knight comes to c3, looking to maneuver through the e2 square. And black develops the rook by putting it on c8, making use of the semi-open file. And white gets the knight out of the way and brings it to e2, looking to jump to the fourth rank soon. Black brings the bishop to c5, aiming at white's freshly placed battery. And white plugs up the fight with the knight, bringing it to d4. Black brings their knight to d6, looking to make good use of the outpost on the e4 square. White pushes c3, and black brings the knight to the outpost on e4, attacking the queen. So, the bishop will take out the knight, and will be recaptured by the pawn. The rook comes to d1, looking for a discovery attack on the queen, if the knight moves. And black makes the first mistake of the game by capturing the knight with the bishop. Because now white gets to capture the bishop with an attack on the queen, and when the queen moves, they have to worry about white pushing f6. What the proper move was is actually just bringing the bishop to a6, attacking the rook. Because if the knight moves with an attack like e6, the bishop can just capture the bishop aiming at the queen. And that would force white to recapture the bishop, and after that, the queen can come to h4 in safety. And the knight can capture the rook on f8, but the bishop would capture the rook on f1. And then it doesn't matter if the king captures the bishop or the rook captures the bishop. And it doesn't matter if the king captures the knight or the rook captures the knight. It would be an even game. That was the proper continuation that Mr. Gullum Kassam, I guess, couldn't find without computer analysis. Rewinding to the actual game now. So when the bishop took out the knight, the rook recaptured forcing the queen out, and the queen found a home on e7. White pushed f6, and this is black's second mistake, was capturing the f-pawn, allowing the exchange by white, 
which forced them to recapture, doubling up their pawns on the f-file and opening up a hole on their king. Black's better option was just moving the queen to c7. And on that note, when it was originally under attack, it should have moved to c7. It was two mistakes moving to e7 and capturing the pawn on f6, which was the nail in the coffin. Because if the queen moved to c7, the pawn capturing the pawn on g7 is not that big of a threat. The rook just could have moved to d8, forcing an exchange on the rooks. And since white has the wrong colored bishop to attack the remaining pawns by the king, white can't formulate an attack strong enough to be a major threat. So, rewinding back to the actual game, after the exchange, white decided to put their other rook on d7, attacking the light squared bishop first before capturing the f6 pawn. The bishop gets out of the way of the attack and turns it around on the rook, but that allows the rook to capture the a pawn. b pawn marches to b5 since the dark squared bishop was attacking it, now it can't, and that also hinders the queen side pawn's ability to march forward. So now finally, the f6 pawn was taken and an attack on the bishop at the same time. Bishop gets out of the way and adds a defender on the f7 pawn. And now the bishop comes to h6, attacking the defender of the f7 pawn, the rook. The rook's got to get out of the way. And when that happens, the rook backs out to f5, attacking the bishop and also allowing it to go to g5 once the bishop moves. So the bishop moves to e6. The rook comes over to g5, and that's all she wrote. Checkmate in five. This position is pretty lackluster, so instead of trying to make up some BS, uh, it's not my style. I'm just going to go through and explain the most common moves to at least get you out the opening. Most common move, knight to f6, and there's two ways to achieve the same position. It's either castle, bishop, e7, knight, c3, castle. Or the other way is you bring out the knight first with knight, c3, Bishop, e7, castle, castle. And it should be a decent game from there. The runner-up number two move is bishop to e6. And from there, you're just going to want to castle. And they have a couple different options, but the main one is just bringing the knight to f6. And you go from there. The most common move is actually not the best. It's not too good trying to pin the knight because that just gives black the opportunity to unpin it with a developing move, which helps them kind of pushing them along if you do that route. And the last move, which is worthy of discussing, is queen f6. The best move to play here is not within the three most popular. You definitely do not want to exchange queens because they'll recapture and build tempo. And now all they have to do is develop their dark squared bishop and their castle and king side. The best move, which is on the top three, is bringing the queen to e3, tucking it behind your pawn. If black wants to castle kingside, he's going to have to move their queen because the bishop and knight both can't use the e7 square. So the most popular move for black is actually bringing the bishop to e6. They can't castle queenside until they do something about the a pawn, which is under fire, by the queen. The only flavor I can bring to the game is actually the best move, but the fourth most common. Queen a4 check. Black has two replies. The better of the two, which is not played often, is pawn to c6. You simply want a castle, and black has no shortage of good moves. They're all similar. There's many different ways that can go. The other option is blocking with the bishop on d7, and then you want to put your queen on b3, aiming at the b-pawn. It doesn't matter what black does, you're going to have a solid game with good percentages. The only percentage that shows as bad is the b6 move, but as long as you castle, you're back in the game. Before we call this a wrap, I'm going to share something that I discovered in the many hours and hours of me checking out all different variations, which I do with every single video. I found something decent. Bishop to e6. White does play f4 in most of the lines. If you play it early, black can play bishop e7, enticing you to take the g-pawn. And if you do, your queen's a goner, because bishop f6 hits the queen. The only square which is safe is g3, but then the black bishop can skewer your queen against the king on h4. I thought that was a pretty cool discovery, you know, good enough to share with you. I apologize to those that found this volume subpar, but you have to understand that this is going to happen with some variations in the future, which just have no flavor to them. With that being said, I appreciate you guys. I will see you on the next video, and this was the first volume that I've released, which I had to make a tough decision 
to not water things down and just tell it how it is. Thanks.